Uh, Mohammed, I want to ask you about a lot of things, but actually I want you to comment, if you could, on the conversation that Joe was having uh, with Brian Deese this morning about effectively whether you think that the money that the administration uh, and Congress effectively approved is what was the, the functional creation of the inflation problem we have today. Are you, which, which side of that are you on? For me, that comes way down on the list. Above that are four things. One is that the Federal Reserve got inflation wrong. It mischaracterized it. Even today, it hasn't acted fast enough. Two is the Ukraine war. Three is that we hadn't thought enough about the energy transition. And then finally, we had supply side issues remaining. So I think that if you were to solve for what created today's inflation, those four things would account for the majority of the drivers. Unfortunately for the administration, people will point the finger at them, even though they come really low down in terms of the causes of the current inflation. So back to the number one uh, issue in your list, which is the Fed. I don't know if you were watching the program earlier. Carlos Gutierrez was on, and he made a very interesting comment. He said the Fed is, in his lifetime, effectively, has been late, and pretty much late always. And as a Fed watcher, I'm curious just why you think that that has always— and it's right, I mean, at least it seems empirically right— why that has been the case. I think it's, it's really hard to take the punch ball away, Andrew. It just comes back to that. The Fed hasn't been late in terms of pumping liquidity. In fact, it overstayed its welcome. But when it comes to making the difficult decision, this Fed in particular has been incredibly slow and has been incredibly slow, slow in acknowledging its mistake. Unlike the, unlike the European Central Bank, we still don't have an explanation from the Fed as to how they've improved their understanding of inflation. So, Mohammed, later this week, we're going to get numbers on, on where inflation really stands. Uh, there's an expectation it's going to come down. The question is, does the market rally on that news? If it rallies, is that the right decision uh, or, or, or the right move? Uh, is it a dead cat bounce? What do you, what, how would you read what we're going to see later and also how the market may read it? So first, I think the expectation, Andrew, is that core is going to come down, but headline will stay at around 8.3%. And if you ask me where is the balance of risk, I think the balance of risk is that we print a higher number on the headline side rather than a lower number. As to what are the implications, first, the implications for the economy are crystal clear. Um, I think everybody now acknowledges that our baseline is stagflation and our balance of risk is tilted more towards recession than it is towards high growth and low inflation. I think that is acknowledged. As to what it means for most companies, Target is the extreme of that. It impacts both on the revenue side and on the cost side. So people are bringing down their profit forecast. What does it mean for market? Why is that translation the most difficult one? Because we've still got so much liquidity sloshing in the system. We haven't yet eliminated the liquidity sloshing in the system. So the markets have been taking this news much better than they would have otherwise. But if I were fully invested right now, I would take some chips off the table. I would wait for more value to be created.